Hi there, thank you for choosing Oxide Hosting. Within this video, we aim to demonstrate how you can get started using your new virtual server. We'll split this video into two sections. Our first section will be based upon our Linux services, this being our classic or storage ranges, followed by our Windows services. We'll firstly start with our Linux services. We'll demonstrate how you can access your services via SSH and SFTP. In this case, we'll be demonstrating using a local Windows client. This should be very similar for other operating systems such as macOS. In order to connect to your server via SSH, you will require an SSH client. In this case, we're going to use the built-in command prompt within Windows, meaning you can use this guide for both Linux and macOS without any issues. You shouldn't need to download any form of applications to get started. To open your command line window, search command prompt on Windows, or terminal for macOS and Linux. We recommend you open your deployment email, as you'll require certain information from this. Once you've got your terminal window open, we'll start by running the command ssh, followed by the server's username. By default this is root. If you're unsure, simply opt for this. Then followed by the at sign. This is followed by the server's hostname or IPv4 address. This can be found within the deployment email. In the case you've changed your SSH port, which isn't needed if the service is new, you can simply specify the port by adding dash "-p", followed by the port you've changed such to. In this case we'll demonstrate such by using the default SSH port of 22. You don't need to specify this if your service is new. Once all the details have been entered, press enter. You will be prompted for security to accept the SSH fingerprint. Simply enter yes, then click enter. You will now be prompted to enter the service password. The password can be found within your welcome email unless changed. Simply copy and paste such in. Please note that to paste you will need to use the right click mouse button rather than CTRLV. You will not see any input, but this is to be expected. The actual input would have been registered. Now click enter. You can now enter all the commands you wish to. Please see our knowledge base for further articles on updating your server for example. In order to connect to your server via SFTP, you will require an SFTP client. In this guide we'll be using the FileZilla client as this is supported on Windows, macOS and Linux. You'll be able to find the download link to this client within the description of this video. Begin by entering sftp colon slash slash followed by the server's IPv4 address. This can be found within the deployment email. Enter this into the host field. You will also need to enter a username. By default this is root. If you're unsure, simply opt for this, followed by your server's password. This can also be found in the deployment email. Finally, you will need to specify a port. By default, this is 22. If you've adjusted your SSH port, please use this instead. If you wish to save this configuration, you will need to go to your site manager option at the top left hand corner below the file option. We won't demonstrate this within this guide though. You can now drag your files from your local machine, located on the left, to the right side, which is your server. You can also drag from your desktop to the right side window to upload to your server. You can also edit these files remotely, and automatically upload any changes to the server by right clicking, then selecting the edit option. We'll now move on to our Windows services. We'll demonstrate how you can access your services via remote desktop. Once again we'll use a local Windows client, because of this you may need to download additional software depending upon your operating system. Simply search Remote Desktop Connection within your App Store. In order to connect to your server via Remote Desktop, you'll need a client for this. In this case we're going to be using the built-in Remote Desktop Connection application within Windows. We recommend you open your deployment email also as you'll require certain information from this. We'd like to remind you before getting started that our Windows services do take time to deploy. Hence make sure you wait around 10 minutes after purchase before logging in. Once you've got your remote desktop connection application open, enter your server's IPv4 address. Then press connect. You will now be prompted to enter a username. By default this is an administrator. If you're unsure, simply opt for this. followed by your service password which can be found in the deployment email. You should now be connected where you should be prompted with the Windows desktop screen. You can now interact with your server like any normal Windows client. Please see our knowledge base for further articles on updating your server for example. That's all from us for this video. 
If you have any further queries or concerns regarding any content demonstrated within this video, please do contact us. We're available to assist you via various support methods and platforms, which can be found on the support section on our website at support.oxide.host. Thank you for watching and choosing Oxide Hosting. Have a great day.